Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. And the book is aimed at those with road cars, those developing racing cars, especially amateur racing cars, and those interested in alternative transport. The topic of today's video is this, be very wary of CFD. Now, why would I say that? Let's take a look. So CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamics, is now widely used by car manufacturers and race teams. Computer modelling of aerodynamic pressures, flows, drag and lift. Here's an example of an older CFD image. It shows pressures modelled over the surface of the vehicle and it also shows some of the air flows. Now, if manufacturers and race teams use CFD in such uh, depth and, and, and spend so much money and time on it, why would I suggest it's less than useful for people who perhaps don't have that expertise or such deep pockets? Well, there are some very, very good reasons why it doesn't work for everyone else. Amateur CFD is in a completely different ballpark to professional CFD. In fact, I'd suggest that at least 90% of amateur CFD images you see on the web are wrong. Often completely and utterly wrong. Why? Why would that be the case? Surely if the software works for professionals, it should work for amateurs as well. No, not necessarily. The first huge problem are poor CAD models, computer-aided design models. So the CFD analyzes a model that's provided to them, a model of the shape of the car. Now, unless that model is 100% accurate, the CAD model, then the CFD won't be accurate either. And I'm talking here from experience. So in the book, I uh, got this particular CAD model of uh, a car my wife then owned, a Mercedes and uh, um, I couldn't afford to have the car scanned because that cost many, many thousands of dollars, 3D scanning of you know, every detail. And so I selected a free CAD model I found on the web. Now the CAD model wasn't too bad. It had some undercar detailing. It showed some of the suspension, some of the exhaust. Uh, it showed the exterior of the car as well as I could tell by looking you know, pretty, pretty well. And then I got that uh, CFD modeled, that CAD model CFD'd. And you can see straight away there's some huge problems. Now, if we look here at the roof, we can see there's a certain pressure. And then on the rear window, that pressure abruptly changes at that edge. Why? Because on the CAD model, the rear windscreen is inset. On the real car, it is flush. It's beautifully flush. So you measure the real car, you don't get that sudden change in pressures across that demarcation line. Why is the CFD wrong in this case? Because the CAD model's wrong. Now, who can afford to have a CAD model developed which shows every single little detail of the car, every suspension arm, every suspension bush, every exhaust and muffler part? I, during the development of the book, I had some fascinating Zoom sessions with the aerodynamicists at Rivian in the US. And they were showing me the level of CAD modeling that they were using when they developed the R1T pickup. And it was extraordinary. They could zoom in at any point of the CAD model, for example, the wheels, the tires, go right down to the tread level, showing all the tread patterns, showing the writing on the sidewall, showing the fact that there was a bulge at the bottom of the tire. Anywhere I asked, because they were doing it live, anywhere I asked, they'd just zoom in and there'd be incredible detail. I've never seen an amateur CAD model even remotely at that level of detail. And as this image shows, if you're not working at that level of detail, the CFD will simply be wrong. It'll be wrong in terms of calculated drag, it'll be wrong in terms of calculated lift and downforce, and it'll be wrong in terms of calculated pressures. What can you do about that without spending a great deal of money to get an accurate CAD model? Nothing. It's just the way it is. It's all going to be wrong. The other area that you see people having huge problems is, is they don't know how to use the software. Uh, either they don't know how to use it, or the software is not good enough to start with, or they're not using it on a, on a, you know, a computer with enough capability to run it at the right level. I don't know. I just look at the end result and I see how wrong it is. So this particular image of a BMW, at a glance it looks fine until you look at this airflow going past the wheel. And it looks just beautiful, doesn't it? Wraps around, flows past the wheel, apparently stays attached on the side panel. That's what it looks like to me. No, 
it wouldn't be like that at all. To get attached airflow behind a rotating open spoke wheel is nearly impossible. It'll reattach, it'll become separated and reattach, say, partway down the door. But the person who was doing this modeling had never actually tough tested a real car, so they just assumed this was correct. And in fact, they, they put it up on a social media site really proud that it was so good. And I looked at it and I thought, well, it wouldn't be like that at all. Another one from a social media site, a Mercedes W123. Now I happen to have one of those cars and I've tested it. I've tough tested it, I've pressure tested it. And if you squint and look at this color representation of flows and pressures, if you squint so you can't see any fine detail, yeah, it looks good. But if you've actually tested the real car, you know a lot of this is wrong. It's wrong on the side glass, it's wrong on the boot lid, trunk lid. It's just not correct. And this one, this one just blew me away. Someone again put this up on social media. Look how much I've done. Look how wonderful this modeling is. Purports, purports to show a Porsche 959. And look at the flow separation from the top of the windscreen. Look at the flow separation here. The real car, and I've also tough tested, not a 959, but a Porsche of a similar era and similar shape, of course doesn't have flow separation from the top of the windscreen. If Porsche aerodynamicists were working at this level, they certainly wouldn't be the company they are today. Of course there's attached flow down the roof and then past that wing. Well, what a surprise. And yet, I've got to say it again, the person put this up and lots of people wrote, oh, that looks really great, that's wonderful. People who had never tested any real car on a real road and actually see what really occurs. So all that CFT is wrong. And yet it was applauded widely when it was put up. People were obviously proud enough to put it up, and yet it's wrong. And that just tells me people are getting lost in the colours, the pretty pictures, punching keys, watching stuff get spat out without realising you've actually got to compare it with reality because that's what you're trying to model. And that is all simply completely wrong. The third problem that I see, and this one's a bit more subtle, when you look at the aerodynamics of a car, every part of the car influences another part of the car. So if you change the front stagnation point, the, the point at which air goes over or under, if you change the height of that, that's quite likely to change the rear stagnation point as well. If you change the pressure behind the car, that's quite likely to change the flow below and above the car. It's all interrelated. It's all one um, complex interrelating system. But that doesn't stop people just taking one component of the car, analysing it, and then telling you what it would do on your car, which is just absurd. And so here's an example of a wing, and here's an example of um, uh, CFD of that wing. Now, the CFD is probably correct. You know, the, the shape of the wing has probably been correctly shown in the CAD model, and the CFD showing the pressures on the wing are probably right. But do those pressures occur when that wing is put on your car, Maybe, maybe not. And do the outcome of those pressures in terms of kilogram downforce, do they apply if you put that wing on your car? Almost certainly not. Why? Because it's going to be influencing pressures on the car as well. So in other words, if you had that wing, as is shown there with those little brackets above a boot or trunk lid, it's going to influence the pressures that are acting on the boot or trunk lid. So not only do we have to take into account the pressures acting on the wing, we have to take into account how the wing pressures influence the car pressures. And so modeling something like this in isolation is only valid if the wing were to be used in isolation and not placed on a real car. Again, measuring the actual downforce that's created by that wing on a real car is so much more valid than modeling it in, in, in space, you know, <laughs> just in, in isolation, not connected to anything else. It doesn't work when you do it in this way. Whereas if you're measuring a real car, you're measuring the whole system by definition. And not only measuring the whole system, you're also measuring it on a real road, real turbulence, uh, real yaw airflows, crosswinds, and so on. So what does a professional say? Uh, Dr. Adrian Gaylard, who's head of aerodynamics at uh, Jaguar Land Rover, JLR, uh, was good enough to contribute to the book. And uh, just to extract a little bit of what he said about computational fluid dynamics, CFD at Jaguar. Now, 
Dr. Gaylard is a world expert in CFD. He's been using or managing it for 33 years, he told me. And uh, what he doesn't know about it, very few people uh, would, would you know, uh, be able to beat it. Here's what he said in part. We've got JLR, we've got CFD into a really good place and know most of its limits. I'd say in a typical development program for a new car, we get 60% of our journey to the drag target, and it's drag's what they're chasing mostly from CFD, and sometimes more. But we still get caught out from time to time, and knowing that will happen, have processes in place to manage the risk. Those processes include wind tunnel testing, road testing, and so on. He says they get 60% there, and that's with some of the best CFD software in the world, some of the best, and they do scan, some of the best CAD modeling, and they scan their competitors' cars uh, to model those and some of the best CFD engineers in the world, and they get only 60% there. All right, 60%. I'd say an amateur is going to be getting 5%, 10%. And the trouble with amateur CFD, as we saw a moment ago, is it's misleading. It's leading you in the wrong direction. You know, I've had people write to me and say, oh, I have flow separation from the very front of the bonnet or hood of my car. What can I do to stop it? And I'm thinking, really? It's a Model T Ford, is it? Because it would need something of that angularity to have separation there. And I asked them and they say, oh, no, 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 it's this car. And they send me a crap CFD image off the web showing flow separation, completely wrong. And I say, well, just go and test your car. I'll bet you 50 bucks it doesn't do that. Oh, really? But this is what it showed. Don't be misled by rubbish CFD that you see everywhere. So when could you use it? Look, if you're developing a vehicle and there's no vehicle yet, and you just want some general shape direction, then I can see CFD being useful. Or if you are prepared to invest the time and the money and have a car 3D scanned in high resolution and can afford high-end professional CFD and the computing power required to run that, then you're going to be in a good place. But you know, you're going to be up for an enormous amount of money doing it in that way. In nearly all circumstances, Measuring a real car in a real environment beats CFD in every respect. Accuracy, cost, ease. All right, the next time someone shows you a CFD image, have a really good look at it and say, does this make sense? And if you're someone who has been measuring on the road things like pressures, things like flows, things like lift and downforce, have an even better look at that CFD and say, well, does this really match what you can actually measure on the road? And unfortunately, with the stuff that's floating around, you know, not the professional company stuff, but the amateur stuff, I'd say, you know, 90, 95% is just garbage. The book's called Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. I have a whole section in the book where we look at uh, CAD and CFD modelling of that Mercedes and uh, comparing it with uh, measurements that are taken on the road. That also is the section that has uh, Dr Gaylard's uh, section, a double page spread uh, where he expresses some fascinating views. The book's available from Amazon in your country. It's 500 pages. It's 170,000 words and over 800 images. So unfortunately, it's not a cheap book. Can't be with that print costs. But I think, especially if you're someone who really thinks CFD is the way for an amateur to to go forward, I think you'll save a lot more than the purchase price of the book in the very first decision that you make in terms of aerodynamic modification or development after you have read it. Thank you.